Welcome to a very spooky episode of Game Review. Really? Is it still called that? Yes, deal with it. <sighs> Welcome to a very spooky episode of Game Review, starring me, Matt Oler. <clears throat> Sorry, I won't be speaking like that the whole episode. Also, I am well aware of what day it isn't. I was originally going to do a top 10 regarding the freakiest moments in gaming, but that's been done to death, so instead we're going to talk about freaky moments that nobody really talks about. If that's not unique enough for you, then I have some words for you, buddy. I'm not a good writer. Since you all know how these videos work by now, let's just get into it. Disclaimer, this list is mostly full of things that creep me out, so you can expect to say to yourself things like, um, how is that creepy? And, is he crazy? And, is this the result of some phobia? And, why am I fully aroused when hearing his mellifluous voice? Number 10. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing! Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing is a really fun game, despite the title being a mouthful. It's basically Mario Kart, but with Sega characters and super moves. <laughs> a lot of their levels are very creative and interesting to look at. Like these target platforms, this laboratory full of undead experiments, and... What the fuck is that? Am I dead? Is this what hell is? Why is it pulsating? Nope, nope, not having this, nope. Number 9. Banjo-Kazooie. One of my favorite games to date is Banjo-Kazooie. It's just like Super Mario 64, but with more to collect, funny dialogue, more special moves, and toilet humor. I love me some toilet humor. At one point, you get to go to Clanker's Cavern, a sewer-looking place full of gross-colored water and green monsters that love the taste of bears. Jerk. Also, who puts a beehive in a sewer? Anyway, you make your way through this underwater pipe, because there's really nowhere else to go, and then... Oh. Um... Hi. Well, guess we're moving on. If you've played Skies of Arcadia, you more than likely remember the Dark Rift, a massive stretch of dark, ominous maelstrom said to shipwreck many hapless adventurers. In fact, there's a whole town named Esperanza, no less, full of downtrodden residents, whose lives have been all but destroyed by said storm. Why they chose to build a town with a perfect view of the abhorred tempest is beyond me. Anyway, storyline happens and you're forced to traverse this tunnel of turbulence, and along the way you encounter many ravaged vessels. Needless to say, it's a very eerie and unsettling voyage, and the music does not help. Near the end of the game, if you decide to go back inside, on purpose, you encounter what most people would call a happy, cute, or playful creature inside. But to me, he's an eyeless, unpredictable monster whose size is comparable to a battleship. Just seeing him floating in the distance makes me uneasy. Metroid Fusion was my very first Metroid game. I know to many of you that's blasphemy, but it's still an amazing game in my eyes. Samus gets infected with a foreign virus dubbed X, and the only way to save her is by fusing her with the DNA of a Metroid. Pretty neat, huh? Anyway, you're tasked with the mission of destroying this laboratory that's been infected with X. Near the end of the game, you get to a lab section labeled NOC, or NOC, as in Nocturnal, I guess. And all the power seems to have gone out. Oh, and every once in a while, this malformed shadow speeds by. That's cool. No biggie. It's not like I didn't have enough on my mind with the super-powered evil clone running around. So you get to the end of the area, where you're finally confronted by the hideous shadow that's been watching you for like three whole chapters. It's a miracle he was able to fit in those elevators, honestly. Oh, he can phase in and out of corporeal form? Well, that explains that, as well as exacerbates my nightmares. Oh, and did I mention, when you destroy his faceplate, he has a gross, six-eyed mutant face underneath. And when you encounter him another M, he has a baby scream. Why? Because screw you, that's why. The game designers must have thought to themselves, we want our fan base to become accustomed to their beds reeking of urine, and their pants hefty with fecal matter. Number 6. Grand Theft Auto 3. GTA has always been a pretty well-loved franchise, but to my knowledge, its popularity seemed to skyrocket once 3 hit the streets. And why not? You get to run around in three dimensions, elude lame police AI, and have casual sex with strangers. What's not to love? Oh right, you're expecting a creepy segue. Clearly whatever that is, is the not to love part. Well here you go. In the mission Kingdom Come, you're told to drive to a mostly empty parking lot to steal a specific car or something. 
But when you get in said car, you're confronted by a swath of swell guys. And by that I mean creepy-faced, maniacal, hysterical suicide bombers. This is not a good time. They come at you from both sides endlessly until their respective vans are blown up, and they never stop yelling at you. Number 5. Majora's Mask Majora's Mask's dark overtones are a secret to nobody. There's the sad tree that's actually a cursed and possibly dead child. There's a giant ugly moon grimacing at you at all times. And then there's this weirdo. But in Akana Canyon, basically this game's land of the living impaired, you come across these stone-faced grunting abominations. Look at him, just grunting at you with that dead stare. I don't want to play this game anymore. If you went out of your way to try to get the stone mask before getting here, you can just walk right by their spawning points without triggering them, since the mask makes you invisible to non-boss monsters, and I make sure to have this mask every time because reasons. Number 4. Jurassic Park Easily my least favorite Jurassic Park game ever played is the first installment on the Super Nintendo, but since I was given it for Christmas as a child, I felt obligated to complete it, and it was not easy, and not much fun either. You wander around as Dr. Alan Grant collecting velociraptor eggs, since the island has been overrun with raptors, in an attempt to genocide them, or at the very least put a huge dent in their population. Much of the game is seen in this all too common but still pleasant top-down view, but the rest of the game is much less enjoyable. When inside buildings and caves, you enter a first-person mode. The music is dreary and dramatic, the doors have this weird echo, and the dinos just sit there, staring at you, waiting for you to make the first move. And you better be sure you brought some ammo, or you're gonna have to deal with them up close with your freaking taser. The freakiest part is walking into a room when you don't even know when something's inside. Like this crap where the raptor's hiding behind the damn door. Or what's worse, when your night vision goggles run out of power. Number 3. Super Mario 64 If you remember numbers 9 and 8 on my list, and why wouldn't you, that was like 4 minutes ago, do you need to see a doctor? This guy should have been a no-brainer. His name is Bubba, he wears shades, and he likes to watch you sunbathe on the beach. He just loiters around, waiting for you to become curious enough to wander over. Wait, no, 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 get away! <laughs> no, no. Damn it. Number 2. Castlevania 64 Any fan of Castlevania can tell you that this is by no means the best in the series. Many would say the worst. But damn it, it's the only one I played extensively, and I remember enjoying it a great deal. You play as either this magic girl or yet another whip guy, and you explore this spooky castle full of ghoulies and such. Blah 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 blah, Dracula blah blah. As is the custom for evil wealthy men, this Dracula, as they call him, has a hedge maze. Color me shocked. And of course, it's guarded by evil dogs. Where else have I seen that? Oh, right. To add to the intensity of running from rabid gargoyles, we have Zombie Ash. Yes, that is a chainsaw hand. The most spine-shivering part is that you can hear his chainsaw idling faintly in the background when he's not on screen. It's like, ugh, crap, where is he? And then, rawr, I'm a spooky gardener man! And you just scream in terror, narrowly avoiding his swings. Hopefully. Number 1. Resident Evil Are you surprised this game comes in at number 1? You're probably thinking, what's this, am I watching a Watch Mojo list? When you think of this game, you don't really think underrated. But you should really be paying attention because the point of this list is that the fear-inflicting part is underrated, not the game itself. Stupid. For the uninformed, and likely cave-dwelling... What do you live under a rock? No way! Resident Evil is a game about a military-esque group inspecting a macabre manor, finding little more than soulless savages and voracious vermin. In case you haven't noticed, I love alliteration. Your adventure eventually takes you to a lone cabin in the woods where you find the infamous Crank. As you make your way back to the exit though, you hear the front door open and close. You think to yourself, uh, who followed me? Did my Amazon package finally arrive? Wait, why would they come way out here? Who the hell am I asking these inane questions? As you approach the living room, you are suddenly knocked unconscious by a pair of shackled hands. You awaken to the sight of what looks like Shrek, 
Appearing to have a face of very loose skin and a severe case of scoliosis, she, yes, this thing has a gender, ambles toward you, likely not happy to see you in her house. You instinctively try to fire your gun because whatever this thing is, it needs to die because I'd like to get some sleep tonight. Unfortunately for you, she takes no damage. She just shrugs it off. So, assuming you've exhausted your ideas on how to deal with her, you run past her and out the door. But that's not the last you see of her, oh no. You see her again later, still just as impervious and hideous as when you first saw her, and once more for the final round. If you happen to read the various notes around the mansion and such, you begin to piece together just what that creature was. She was apparently a lab experiment, as was her mother. Her father was one of the scientists. After much testing on both her and her mother, she went insane, like you do. And when she saw her mother again, she thought to herself, this not mommy, ripped off mommy's face and stitched it to her own, thinking she'll see her real mommy again someday and return her face to its rightful owner. She also did this to her father, hence why she has multiple faces draped over her own now. Oh, and she shrieks from time to time because, you know, sadness. Anyway, yeah girl gave me the shakes. It was not a good time. Now that you've seen what makes me tick, why not tell me about your freaky moments that nobody ever mentions? Does the ghast from Minecraft weird you out? Or maybe you didn't like dealing with the re-deads from Wind Waker? Or perhaps you were irked by the boogeyman from Toe Jam and Earl? Boogie, 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 boogie. Let me know in the comments. And if you like Donkey Kong Country, check out the first video I made. Even if you don't like DKC, click it anyway. It's fun, I swear. I know clicking things always gets my motor running.